How's it going? Uh, my name is Jeff Sawyer, one of the dev leads for the IBM uh, Kubernetes service. I'm going to be talking about um, some kind of some best practices for scaling your Kubernetes cluster and kind of how to take advantage of the resources in your cluster. Um, I have a two year old at home uh, that's probably just up on the screen. Um, he is a Bob the Builder fan. Anyone have kids that are Bob the Builder fans? There we go. So I'm going to use a Bob the Builder analogy today. Uh, we're going to have a couple tools in our tool belt for kind of taking advantage of uh, your Kube cluster correctly. Um, the, kind of the first thing to really delve into that is understanding what kind of nodes are in your cluster and what kind of apps you have running. Do you have a lot of Go apps running? Do you have a lot of Java apps? Do you have some Ruby apps or Node apps? So most Node apps and Java apps are usually very memory intensive. Um, Go apps are usually very, very smaller. So um, in our production cluster, we use Kubernetes to run our whole cloud service. We, most of our nodes are very, very uh, high on the CPU, low on the memory. Uh, most of it's in Go, that's why. But we have a couple of nodes that run Prometheus, and they're very, very heavy on the memory. So to really take advantage of this tool belt, you need to know the size of your uh, nodes to start with. Um, so we're, the first thing we're going to talk about is requests and limits. If anyone can raise their hand and give me a good definition of what the difference is plus if you can tell me what guarantee QS, QoS classes are, I will give you a beer ticket. Anyone? Right here in the middle. So what's the difference between uh, guaranteed and best effort then? Yep. So I'll just repeat that correct to get my beer ticket. Um, that sucks for me. Uh, but <laughs> hopefully, I know Chris, so hopefully it'll give me another one. Uh, so uh, yes, correct. So I'll repeat the answer. So what the QS classes really are is a way to, when the, Q, the Kube scheduler starts shooting things, um, it starts off at the bottom at best effort, then um, burstable, and then guaranteed. So as thing, Kube starts shooting things, um, once you define these memory limits, we'll go into them. If you have a set of guarantee and Kube will shoot it last. So something like Nginx, you probably don't want to shoot your Nginx reverse proxy to start with. That would probably be really bad. So up here on the screen, what these are, um, requests and limits. So the big difference between these, requests is when your application starts. So if Kube doesn't have the resources available uh, for this app, it's half a core and 100 megs of memory, it won't schedule it. Um, but as in worker nodes start filling up um, for this app, uh, three CPUs is kind of crazy for Nginx. But if, uh, when Kube starts filling up and that work nodes becomes full, it'll start shooting things that are over those limits. The next thing in our tool belt is selectors. So if you have some really sweet um, nodes in your cluster that have SSD drives, and you, you have the money to pay for them, great. But um, if you're running uh, like maybe Nginx, for example, or actually not Nginx, Redis, for example, you need that disk speed. And a, a good way to kind of do that is using node selectors. So you can have a, a label called disk type, and you can specify the value for that, and uh, Kube will respect that scheduling for your worker nodes. Next on the list is anti-affinity. We're probably going to spend the rest of the time on this. This is uh, something that's really kind of hard to understand, but really cool. But basically what this says on the screen here is, I'll kind of highlight that just with my mouse. Uh, it's not up there. Preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution. What this means is Kubernetes will respect, um, for in this case, the topology key, it will respect basically putting only one version of my, um, I guess, Redis instance on a node. So it'll basically prevent uh, running multiple Redis instances on the same node for performance reasons um, or just uh, reliability reasons. So if you have a front door API, you probably don't want all those instances running on the, the same worker node. That'll just be bad and things will go down. Um, it's not very reliable. And last on the list is taints and tolerations. This is a little newer as well. Um, it kind of just became more baked in recent versions of Kubernetes, but uh, you can basically taint a node um, that will only allow things to schedule there that have certain tags. So in this example, you can taint a node, uh, Kubernetes, uh, taint my node, GP node, whatever you want to call it, a key value pair. And basically, you're saying do not schedule anything there unless it has this key value pair on that pod. So you basically have a t uh, toleration that looks like this on the screen here on the left. The key is uh, GPU. Um, you set it to true. And Kubernetes will respect that uh, toleration. We use this in production. Um, Prometheus, if anyone runs production, P Prometheus in production, it's very, very hard to do. It chews up a ton of memory. Um, ours, I think, uses 64 gigs of memory in production. It's crazy big. So we have a couple of nodes just set aside for uh, Prometheus. This is how we make sure they don't schedule on some of the more critical nodes and start bouncing things all around in Kubernetes. And that's it. Five seconds left. Thank you so much.